sometimes we have pressure about ethical principles like truthfulness, justice, equality, even like kindness, forgiveness, gratitude. Somehow we tend to think that they are impractical. And if someone is behaving ethically, that they will face so much trouble. And life doesn't work that way. Basically, there is a, ta a tacit accusation. There's a tacit accusation here towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our attitude. I'm not saying we are verbalizing it, but as in Arabic they say, بِلِسَانِ uh, الْحَالِ لَا بِلِسَانِ الْمَقَالِ Right? It's, it's the statement you're making through your attitude, not verbalizing with your tongue. But your attitude, our attitudes as human beings, our actions actually make statements. And sometimes these are more powerful, much more powerful than what we say. So it seems that when we have such a tacit belief, we are actually accusing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He wants us to adhere to principles that will make our lives difficult. Principles that are dysfunctional. So we think we know better, so we resort to other means. We find an alternative. We bypass that ethical system. Okay, okay, that doesn't work. Let me just get things working. Then I will shift back to principles when I don't need anything done. Like when I need to get some results, I need to break from the ethical principles, from the principles of Islam. And I need to find practical stuff because that's impractical. And I will do it, then I'll go back. That's exactly like the statement of the brothers of Yusuf, yes? Let's get rid of him, let's kill him. Then we'll become good people. So things won't work out unless we do that, you know, sin or kill our brother or get rid of him. And then after, after that, we can go back to living a principled life. We'll be okay. So somehow, most of us are actually guilty of this. And this is a very serious issue. It's a very serious issue. The, the reason is Allah created this life and this universe and Allah designed principles, these ethical principles of uh, honesty, of charity, of forgiveness, of generosity, of thankfulness, of uh, forgiveness, of equality, of humbleness and humility. Allah designed them to be the system of this life, the practical system of this life. And if you don't see the practicality, you're looking in the wrong direction. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu ghalibun ala amrih, walakin akthar nasi la ya'lamun. And Allah will make everything come back to the truth. Allah will, will make everything come to its right course, take its full course and come to the right point of balance. But most people don't see that. Most people don't recognize it. Most people don't know it. And Allah designed ethical principles for the sake of practicality. So ethics speak the language of this universe, they're not against it, they're not impractical, but they need patience and insight. So if you lie, you get away with a lie and you avoid the blame because of lying, you think you've made it. But you don't know that sometimes probably 30 years down the line, the implications of this lie through this universal beautiful system that Allah put in this universe will actually come back to you. But by then you've you forgot about the lie so you don't make the connection. And you say, where is all this, you know, why is all this coming my way? Where did it come from? Everything you put in this, there's a balance. This whole universe worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of it. The only two types of creatures that have choice are human, human beings and jinn. So this universe has a beautiful balance and it will be kept. The only ones who interfere with the harmony of the system are human beings and jinn when they make the wrong choices that are not in line with the Sharia or with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Sunnah of the Prophet When you because the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet they help you blend into and become part of this universal harmony. And that's the secret behind the hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, the divine hadith, the hadith al-Qudusi in Sahih al-Bukhari, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and my servant keeps seeking nearness to me through acts of worship, right? You do more acts of worship until I love him. And when I love him, I become what? His eyes with which he sees, his ears with which he hears, his hand with which he acts, and his foot with which he walks. And if he asks of me, I shall give him. And if he seeks my protection, I shall give it to him. This, what does that mean? That means Allah will take care of your sight, of your eyesight. So Allah will make you see the right things. And 
And Allah will make you see the right things in everything. So you will see the reality of everything. Allah will make you hear and recognize the reality of everything you hear. Is it truthful or untruthful? Is it right or is it wrong? Is it good for me or not good for me? And, and Allah says, I will be his hand with which he acts. That means Allah will guide you to the things that are good for you in this life and the next. And also Allah will make you go to places, walk into places that are actually good for you in this life and in the next. And if he asks of me, I shall give him. And if he seeks my protection, I shall protect him. In a hadith reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, and in Sahih, famous hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, or the Prophet sallam says, whoever makes this dunya his main concern, man kanat dunya hammahu, shattat Allahu amrahu, Allah will increase his concerns. Allah will increase his worries and his troubles. Shattat Allahu amrah, wa ja'ala faqrahu bayna aynihi. And Allah will cause his poverty and lack and, and, and lack in front of him wherever he goes. So he will find lack wherever he goes. وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةُ هَمَّهُ Whose ever main concern is the akhira, and it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. جَمَعَ اللَّهُ لَهُ شَمْلَهُ Then Allah will reduce all his distractions and his worries into one cause. One cause. وَجَعَلَ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ And Allah will bring a sense of abundance and richness into his heart, into his whole being. So he will be rich. He will experience richness. He will experience life fully and feel that his experience in life is so rich in so many senses. وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا And that's my point. وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَا And this world, this universe will serve him, will be at his service, even if it's against its own will. What makes life what makes this dunya serve the believer, the true believer? Because it's designed in that way. So once you blend into that beautiful system, which the Quran calls the mizan, once you blend into it and you know act in, a, accord, in accordance with it, and you can only do this by being true to Islam, being true to the ethics and ethos of Islam. When you do this, you blend into this universal harmony and all of a sudden you build on that momentum. You take advantage of it and it serves you. So the right people will show up in your life. Things will come right on time when you need them. And things that sometimes you chase will run away from you because they're not good for you. Only the good things will come to you. So the whole universe will serve you. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ is saying. This world will serve him even if it's against its own will. Allah will cause it to come to your service. Where does this come? It comes from the fact that our ethical principles, ethical teachings of Islam, the general guidelines of Islam, all of them are in harmony with the universal system. And if you think, even for a moment, that your benefit or your interest lies in anything against Islam, then you are short-sighted when it comes to that. You're not seeing the whole picture.